So we're going to jump off to the other side of the country than what we're usually reporting on. Uh, they found a mass grave, and if you're already a member, consider becoming one if you see videos like this. So a week beforehand, smash on that like button, leave a comment down below, share your boys some love, help it get out there so the world can see it. Now, in Nuevo León, Escobedo, they found a mass grave, and this is a Sinaloa cartel dumping ground for bodies, basically. Uh, the Attorney General's office said that they have three of the people identified, but that the other three are still under process of investigation, so they can know who they are. Now, authorities in Nuevo León said that this grave had been used for a long time as a throw place for bodies, and they're expecting to find a lot more. These six that they found right now are what they're expecting, I think, to be the initial, maybe the ones at the top. And it's not always just one hole. Just because it's a mass grave doesn't I mean it's just one big hole like you see in the movies. When they say mass grave, it could be a hole. And then another five feet over, ten feet over, there could be another hole. And then three feet over there. You guys understand. Uh, they're not all just in one spot. So they could be split up into different groups. So they don't have to keep opening up the same hole and smelling those already deteriorated bodies. Uh, or just dig a new one so they don't have to freeze that in after they've been rotting there for a couple weeks, months. Who knows how long. The ones that have been identified so far, um, we have Jose Isai Limon Saucedo, 33 years old, Jesus Daniel Cepedo Ortiz, 21 years old, Alan Gerardo Perez Gaetan, 30 years old, and they all had cranial cephalic trauma, like their head had been beaten in probably with a rock or maybe a baseball bat, something like that, caused a skull fracture, as well as marks from a projectile from a firearm going into their head so it looks like they're beat pretty good and you know executed as well or as they say here Piero de Gracia so the attorney general's office said that uh they did genetic testing and that's what they're trying to use to identify the other three that haven't been identified and this is being done at the university hospital in Monterey um one other victim that has been identified um Close to there was Naomi Elizabeth Garcia Arambula. She was 22 years old, and she'd actually been disappeared since the 16th of January, so a little over two weeks ago. Um, I might put her photo up in the thumbnail. Terrifying. Someone's daughter, you know? Now, her death was 100% uh, provoked by impacts of several bullets, you know, it wasn't just one shot to the back of the head like the other ones. Um, sad, you know, it's becoming more and more common, and the fact is women, it doesn't always necessarily mean that uh, they were involved in organized crime, you know, it could be that they're someone's girlfriend, or, you know, things happen, and it's disgusting, and it's sad, but those are the rules of the game, and sometimes women are on the other side, too, and it is what it is. It kind of uh, brings reality. You know, it's a reality check sometimes. You see these young women. You know, lots of times with that, he's already a mother. So it's a loss of a daughter and a mother at the same time. Um, we just had the arrest of Elcano as well in this area, 35 years old. Um, he was arrested by the Agencia Estatal Investigador. That was on the 19th of January. And he was eating at a restaurant in Monterrey. And they're saying that. Him being the plaza boss for San Simulo Cartel in the area that he's the one responsible for the bodies that were seen in this mass grave. That these were left there, you know, they're executed there. And we want to look at it upon his orders. So, we'll see, uh, yes, he's already detained in custody in, the pri in prison. We'll see if he ends up becoming uh, charged for these, uh, these crimes. Uh, they have a lot of threats, that he was making like terroristic type threats against uh, high-ranking police and military officials. And he was fighting, you know, for the control of the Plaza Nuevo León uh, since a little while ago, and they've made a big dent, but you cause too much ruckus and cause too much pressure, you know, it comes back down on you. It might feel good at the moment you think you're top dog, but the next day rolls around, the sun comes up, you realize what you did. Uh, ain't no fun. So... There's actually a collective of people who look for bodies. They're called the Buscadores de Nuevo León. 
kind of like the women, I don't know if you guys remember that, let me use the, the videotapes and I interviewed before that with the bodies on Sonora. Um, this one that I'm speaking on is headed by Alores Huerta. And she said that there, along with the State Commission on Missing People, are looking for more bodies in the area, but that they are in grave uh, circumstances as far as personnel and people working, that they're in very dire need of volunteers to cover such large amounts. And on top of the fact, because of threats they've received and things like that, a lot of people quit and are afraid to come out and help them. So they're very understaffed and it's, that's causing a lot of complications for the further recovery and bringing a, a end to this tragedy. So right now, this whole area is, uh, I don't even know where to start. It's, there's so many different cartels fighting over this area and it goes back and forth so often. It's, I feel it's almost like mutual crime to the point that the people there are just tired of organized crime and they don't really care who's there as long as they don't abuse them. Uh, they just leave normal people alone. They're just tired of this cartel violence. They're sick of it. They just want to go back to living a normal life. And I don't think that's going to happen. Just there's some places, this being one of them, just like Michoacan, one of them, Zacatecas, because of their importance for drug trafficking routes or their proximity to the American border, different reasons, um, geographic location, like they're close to the Golden Triangle for, you know, Zacatecas is an example, that they'll never be at peace as long as there's two different cartels fighting for control of this, this country because they're with so much money for them to just leave it aside and and not fight over it. That's what these groups do. And as the soldiers and people are expendable to them, it doesn't really cost them anything uh, better than a moment to give the order to go send these guys to go fight. And they'll go fight and die for four or $500 a month. And they think that's good money. You know, life's so short. Time is our most precious commodity. And to see someone throw it away like that, sad. They don't realize their own potential in this life. And you can't blame them lots of times they have kids and they just need to put food on the table. It's uh, not anything complicated. It's, it's basic survival and they're just trying to keep their family alive. And that's when it's, you know, sad there's sicarios and everything, but not all of them are just horrible, evil people. Some of them are just trying to put food on the table and this is the only way they get by. And it's a shame, you know, a kid's going to grow up without a father and who knows how many victims his father, you know, killed of innocent people. So it's a losing situation all the way around. And if you are involved in this life or know anyone who is and would like a, you know, a little advice to walk away, I'd love to give you guys any encouragement I can because all you take away from that life is negativity, as in prison, death, and bad health, my friends. So have a good one. Adios. Salabala. Hasta la próxima. Mirazos.